if I don't singe my eyebrows off today, I'm gonna call today's video a success. That's your disclaimer. This video is probably one of the most dangerous I've ever done. This video could have consequences if I don't do it correctly. And yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Without meaning to, I have made a seasonal latte almost every season of the year so far. Back in late fall and early, I was gonna say early Christmas time, but early winter time, we did pumpkin spice lattes, which is the obvious choice. It's delicious, it's seasonal. We did my recipe and we also tested out James Hoffman's recipe, which was super fun. Then fast forward a little bit and late spring, early summer, we did honey vanilla lavender lattes three different ways. And now we're here in August, which I really feel is like a separate season from that early summer of like May to June. I feel like August is like summer part two. So that being said, I think it's time for another seasonal latte. Now there are a couple different directions you could go with an August seasonal latte. Of course, floral flavors are super common in summer. You have really tea-like flavors being common in summer, but that didn't feel right. And we already kind of did that with the lavender drink a couple months ago. So what I thought, August, camping season, camping season, bonfires, bonfires, s'mores, s'mores latte. And this is something that I've wanted to do for a really long time because a while ago in the, in the before times, I visited New York and I went to a cafe called Felix Roasting that had one of the most just amazing lattes of my life. And it was a s'mores latte. And not only did I get a house-made marshmallow just flambéed on top of my drink, but I had my drink smoked before it was served to me. And if I took a video of this, I will be playing it over here. <laughs> no, but this latte was amazing. And it's something that I've always wanted to recreate slash be inspired by in a drink that I can make at home. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make a s'mores latte. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be dangerous. We're gonna have a good time doing it. Also, apparently I wasn't the only one who thought a s'mores latte would be a wonderful thing to do this season because we have a partner for this video who was gracious enough to send us a ton of stuff that we're gonna be using in our recipe today. Da -da -da -da, Ghirardelli. <laughs> they are the sponsor for today's video. They have sent us a ton of amazing new products that they launched. We're going to be using them in our recipe and we're gonna be tasting the deliciousness that they create together. I also feel like it's appropriate to get a little bit fancier today because we're gonna be using some, some fancier tools than we usually do. So I will be right back and here's a fun transition. I feel like this is this is classic Morgan drinks coffee. Okay, so we're gonna make two different types of s'mores latte today. We're gonna make a hot one, of course. We're also gonna make an iced one because it is 80 degrees outside right now and it is going on 90 later today and it will be 107 degrees two days from today. So I think an iced one is very, very necessary. Now, Ghirardelli sent me a ton of really fun product to poke around with, including a bunch of their frappe mixes, which you can use for frappes or milkshakes or smoothies or whatever sort of blended iced thing you would enjoy. After some recipe testing, I have decided that we will be using these three products for our recipes today. We have their, of course, their chocolate syrup because chocolate s'mores, we need some sort of chocolate base. We will also be using their majestic cocoa powder. And finally, we will be using their recently released dark chocolate chip frappe mix. And if you'd like to learn more about that, I'll also have a link down in the description below. Let's get started with the recipe. I like to think these drinks are gonna be very suited to a coffee party if you are going to one of those. This might not be something you make every single day as your morning latte before you rush off to work. But if you really wanna blow someone out of the water or anything like that, or just, just have fun and make something, that's what this recipe is for, because it's not practical. The first thing we're gonna do is toast off some graham crackers, because we're gonna be doing a chocolate graham cracker rim to our drink. So get yourself some graham crackers, get yourself some sort of plastic bag, and a mallet. <laughs> now, you get a hammer or a mallet or something that you are comfortable smashing graham crackers with, and maybe also a towel so you don't do this directly onto your countertop. Now, I am just gonna eyeball this. You do not need to measure for this part. We just need an adequate amount of ground up graham crackers that we can toast off. Start smashing. This is the first part of the recipe that has the potential to be a little bit dangerous. Be careful when you are whacking your graham crackers. Please do not hit yourself or anyone else in your household for that matter. Now I want them to all be about the same size. Now that we have our ground up graham crackers, we're gonna put them on a baking sheet. Make sure we have a nice scattered layer. You don't want these to be too stacked on each other because we want them to, to brown nicely. So just get them spread out. We're now gonna put these under the broiler to toast them off until they are a slightly darker kind of golden brown color. They're not done yet. For me, that took between six to seven minutes and we're left with this really nice, slightly darker golden brown color on our graham crackers. I'm gonna set this behind me on the stove and we're gonna get ready to do the rest of our rim. The house smells so good right now. Now, when doing your chocolate rim, you wanna make sure you have some sort of bowl slash container that the rim of your glass will fit into so you're able to dip it and get a nice even coating around the rim. I have this bowl. Now for this part, I'm gonna be using our chocolate sauce. I'm gonna be pouring it into our bowl, creating a nice layer around the bottom as well as a little bit of height on it so we get a nice amount of rim right around the edge. Enough that our graham crackers that we just toasted up will stick to it. 
I love doing fancy lattes because it really just feels like arts and crafts. That's the amount of chocolate I have in here. I'm gonna make sure it's all spread out nice and even in its depth. And then we're just gonna do some magic here. Shake it lightly just to make sure you get any excess off. But that is at least the beginning of your chocolate graham cracker rim. Now repeat the same process with your graham crackers. This is so fun. <laughs> Doesn't that look good? <laughs> now we have our toasted graham cracker chocolate rim. Great, first step is done. Now we gotta put stuff inside the glass. Get your chocolate sauce back out. It's time to use that again. I'm adding 10 grams of our chocolate sauce to this. That may not seem like a ton when you have it in this glass, but believe me, that is plenty. As well as the fact that we've got, we've got a lot of sweet things going on. So we need, we need to balance it slightly. So don't go overboard on your chocolate sauce. Or do, honestly, it's your drink, do what you want. Now, the next thing we're gonna be adding is just, just a tiny, tiny dash of liquid smoke. This stuff is very powerful. Do not go overboard with this. Otherwise you might be just drinking a bonfire, <laughs> which is not what we're going for here. We're just going for a light, light smoky flavor to give us like the essence of s'more. And then with our big fancy bar spoon, I'm just gonna stir those two things together. The stage we're at right now is your house smelling like it's on fire. If it smells like that, you're in the right direction. See, I told you this wasn't the most practical drink because even before recipe testing, I didn't have liquid smoke lying around. So if you do, props to you. But if you don't, you should be able to find it at most grocery stores in like the condiment area. I found mine next to the relish. So there's that piece of information. The next stage of this is gonna be pretty standard. You're gonna need a double shot of espresso or two ounces of espresso, roughly. You're also going to need steamed milk. You can use whatever milk you like. Oat milk, soy milk, almond milk, hemp milk, rice milk. There's even pea milk nowadays. I saw that at the store the other day. You can use whichever you would like. You can also use whole milk, which will probably give you the fullest, creamiest, most s'mores-like flavor, but again, up to your preference. Double shot of espresso. And then just stir with your obnoxiously long bar spoon. It looks cool. We're going for flair today. Once your chocolate and liquid smoke and espresso is all incorporated, go get your milk. Okay, we've got our steamed up milk. I don't know if I can do any latte art in this. Now this is the base of our s'mores latte. We have the graham crack, we have the milk, we have the chocolate and we have coffee and we have some sort of smoky taste to it as well. You might be saying, Morgan, you're missing a pretty important component right now. I might say to you, it's time for fire. <laughs> Controlled fire, that is. <laughs> What do you think I was gonna do? We're gonna toast some marshmallows now. See, this was the part that I think is genuinely gonna be dangerous. I have used this twice now in recipe testing. It's a little scary each time, and every single time I think I'm gonna burn something down, but we're gonna use it again today. This is a kitchen torch, or otherwise known as a butane torch. It uses butane. You can buy it at most home goods stores or kitchen stores or whatever's nearest to you. It's a lot of power. I don't think I should be wielding, but uh, we need a toasted marshmallow, so. There goes nothing. This is also my disclaimer that you should be very careful with kitchen torches and fire and anything flammable. If you are a child or if you are someone who is accident prone like me, maybe get yourself some supervision at this step. If not, if you're feeling brave, more power to you. Anyways, toast up your marshmallow to your liking. Did it. Now we're just gonna place that over top of our latte. As a final step, we're gonna bring over our cocoa powder. We're gonna do a very, very fine sprinkle right over the top. Dun, da, da, da. Here's our final result with the hot s'mores latte. You have toasted marshmallow, you have essence of smoke, you also have chocolate, you have graham cracker, you have all the things you need to make a delicious s'more, but in drinking format. To drink this, I do recommend that you take off your dangerous sharp skewer on top and eat these separately. But that being said, let's, let's enjoy this. That's so good. Guys, this is, this is so good. If you are in any way a fan of chocolate and marshmallow and coffee, please make this. I'm gonna need a minute to just sit and enjoy this. This is delicious, of course it is. All of these things pair wonderfully with coffee. The added smoke adds some more depth to the flavor that I don't think you'd get if you just did chocolate and graham cracker and it's, it's wonderful. And it's a pretty dang close replication of the smoked s'mores latte that I had in New York. Okay, so that's this drink hot, but let's make it iced. This is like the next dangerous part of this recipe. Things I should not be allowed with. Appliances with blades. Ah, I know I'm not. Okay, there we go. 
Huh, I can use a blender. Now when thinking about doing a cold version of this, one could of course just do an iced version. You could not steam your milk, you could put it in a cold glass, you could add ice, and I'm sure it would be delicious. But after poking around all the stuff that Ghirardelli sent me, I thought we might as well do a blended version because at this point we're just going for being as extra as possible. We are going all in, so why not get out the blender? And I gotta say, I don't know if this is a hot take, but blended coffee drinks are so good. They are so good. It's like a milkshake and coffee all in one. Like what's not to like? So I thought we'd treat ourselves today. Let's make a blended s'mores latte. Also get yourself a nice fancy glass to put your drink in. And we're gonna repeat those first two steps from earlier. Just gonna push everything off to the side. First things first. And then shake it slightly. Of course you get all those extra drips off. And now into our graham cracker. That seems adequate. Set your cup off to the side, bring the blender back. Now, while our frappe mix does have chocolate chunks in it, it does not have any coffee added. So we will be adding some in a little bit, but to start off, we're gonna begin with about 45 grams. Oh, so close. A little bit more, a little bit less. Okay, 45 grams into the blender. Once more, we are gonna add a little dash of liquid smoke. Now remember, this stuff is powerful. You do not need more than a gram. I go with about half a gram into the blender and I'm spilling it on the counter. Once more, we have a double shot of espresso into the blender. Next up, we have about 80 grams of milk into the blender. Now we also need 100 grams of ice into the blender. We do need to, of course, put another marshmallow on top of this. Or, you know, maybe two, there are no rules. There you go. A blended cold version of a s'mores latte. Now, of course, we must consume it for quality assurance. Well, don't look at that. Did I overfill the glass slightly and it trickled down the edges, therefore creating a mess on the counter? Maybe. But in all honesty, this is a pretty fantastic summer treat. The graham cracker rim doesn't impede my enjoyment of this drink at all. In fact, the texture of the graham cracker around the edges is really nice and it's not too messy. The chocolate isn't too sweet, so it overpowers the entire drink. You have a really nice balance between some of those darker cocoa notes and then also the sugar that's been added to it. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> there are s'mores lattes, two different ways, the hot version and a cold version. Now, if you have any recommendations on ways to improve what I've done today, or if you have your own s'mores latte recipe, I would love to hear it because I would like to just make more of these. And if they can be even better than what I've done today, I'm all for it. Now, a huge thank you again to the sponsor of today's video, Ghirardelli, because without them, I would not have the ability to basically run a home cafe out of my house right now. Seriously, there is so much syrup in my house right now, I can't even tell you. <laughs> but if you'd like to learn more about any of their products, be it their syrups, be it their cafe goods, be it their frappe mixes or new releases, there's gonna be a link in the description down below. And with that, I'm gonna go enjoy this. I'm gonna go sit outside and enjoy it. I'm gonna go try to have a nice rest of my day. And I hope you do too. I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee. I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee on most platforms, TikTok and Instagram. I post content almost every single day on one or the other. And I post here once a week. I hope you have a lovely day and ignore the mess that I've made. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>